Well, it's February 2020, and since our last update, Google has been really busy releasing new features for the Google Assistant. So we've got a lot to cover in this video, including what Google announced at CES and some major new features, including updates to note taking, new options for photo frames, expansion of call screen, a new way to search for podcasts, interpreter mode expansion, and much more. Let's dive in. Now, just a quick word of warning. Any of the features you see demoed in this video are using the English version of the Google Assistant in the United States. Also, if you're not in the United States or you don't use the US English version of the Google Assistant, do note that some of these features that we demo in our video may not have rolled out to you just yet. Also note that we will be muting the wake word in our demos so we don't trigger your Google Assistant at home. All right, now let's move on to our first major Google Assistant feature update, and this involves note taking. Now you've been able to manage lists and add items to lists like your shopping list with the Google Assistant for some time, but now Google has expanded this feature to include note taking as well as the third party services you can connect to the Google Assistant for note taking and lists. You can now choose several different services that the Google Assistant will sync your lists and notes to, including any.do, anylist, bring, and of course Google's popular keep note taking app. You will also have the option to not sync your lists and notes with one of these services. To see your lists and notes, you can just ask the Assistant to either show me my notes or show me my lists. To choose your new default notes and lists service, go into your assistant settings, go to services, then choose notes and lists, and then choose the option you want. Next up, let's talk about some significant changes coming to the photo frame mode of Google Assistant displays. About a month ago or so, Google rolled out new buttons on the screen of Google Assistant displays that allows you to share the current photo being displayed with your contacts through Google Photos. You can also share the photo currently being displayed by asking Google to share it. The star button lets you add the current photo to your favorites. And then if you have a photo that you don't want to see displayed, there is a button that if you hit it, it'll make sure that the photo being displayed won't be displayed on Google Assistant displays anymore. Speaking of Google Assistant displays, Google has just rolled out a new feature for the Nest Hub and Nest Hub Max that uses high frequency sounds to determine whether or not you're close to the device. When it detects that you've moved further away from the screen, like after setting a timer, the text on the screen will get larger, making it easier to read across the room. This update also gives us proactive notifications for the Nest Hub. Now it won't give you proactive notifications for a specific person like the Nest Hub Max will because it uses facial recognition to do that, but it will give you proactive notifications that can be seen by everyone in your household. The Nest Mini also has the ultrasound feature as well, though its capabilities are a bit more limited. The Nest Mini can sense when you're nearby and it'll illuminate where you need to press in order to increase or decrease the volume. All right, now let's talk about robocalls. If you hate robocalls and spam calls as much as I do, you're really gonna like this new Google Assistant feature, but if you're not a Pixel 4 user, you're probably going to be envious of it. What Google has done here is that they've expanded the call screen feature to allow the Google Assistant to screen every call coming into your phone before it rings, unless that call is coming from a known contact within your phone. To see the new settings, open your phone app and go into settings, then select spam and call screen. Select call screen, and it's here where you'll be able to decide which unknown calls the Google Assistant will screen for you. I have all of mine selected for my Google Assistant to screen, so only people in my contacts get through to my phone, and so far, I haven't gotten a single spam call since I enabled this feature. The feature works by utilizing the new Google Assistant on the Pixel 4 phones. The phone actually picks up the call without ringing your phone. You'll then get a silent notification. The Google Assistant will ask the person why they're calling and what the call is about. Hi, this is the Google Assistant. Can I ask what you're calling about? 
Hey, I'm just calling to talk with Josh. All right, hang on while I try to reach them. If it's an actual person on the other end of the phone call, and if they say something to the assistant, your phone will then ring with the translation of what the Google Assistant heard when it screened the call, so you know what the person is calling about. It'll then give you the option to pick up the call or decline it. This is hands down one of the most groundbreaking Google Assistant features that I've used within the past six months. Now, if you're like me and you get way too many robocalls and spam calls, having the Google Pixel 4 and 4 XL as your phone just really makes a difference here. Now, if you're curious to see what other features Google just rolled out for the Pixel 4 phones as well as older Pixel phones, we just did a video about the latest Google Pixel feature drop. If you're interested, I'll make sure to leave that link to that video below. All right, next up, let's talk about an update to the Google Assistant's interpreter mode. Interpreter mode first debuted last year on Google Assistant displays and focuses on being a translator between two people speaking different languages. Now, interpreter mode is available for the Google Assistant on mobile devices, including iOS devices. To use it, just ask Google, for example, to be your French interpreter, or help me speak Thai, or just say interpreter mode. This will bring up the mode and you can then have your conversation with the other person without the need to constantly hit a button like in Google Translate. The Google Assistant's translator mode supports 44 languages to date. To see the full list, check out the video description below. Next up, let's talk podcasts. Google just rolled out a new topical podcast search feature for the Google Assistant. So if 2020 is the year that you've decided you're going to dive into the world of podcasts, or if you've been listening to podcasts for a long time now, you can use this feature to help narrow down your search for that perfect podcast. You can ask Google to show you some tech podcasts or find a podcast about Tesla, or if you're looking for a podcast with a specific person, you can ask for that as well. Next up, let's talk about reading bedtime stories to your kids. Now, this is a cherished memory between children and their parents. And unfortunately, it's often a moment that parents more and more miss out on because they're either away from home on work or business travel, or they're serving in the armed forces and are being deployed overseas for months at a time. Well, Google is helping out here with a new feature that will allow parents to read to their kids bedtime stories when they're away from home. Parents can go to mystorytime.com to upload existing audio or record a new story. And these recordings are saved on the cloud and instantly available on your Google Assistant devices back home. Lastly, here are a few quick updates. Hulu has now added support for the Google Assistant. So you can watch Hulu on-demand shows on your Google Assistant displays, as well as use the Assistant to cast Hulu on-demand shows to your Chromecast TV. Do note, at the time of this recording, live TV shows on Hulu are not yet available through this service. All right, now before we wrap up, I do want to take you through a couple things that Google announced at CES that are pretty cool and are due to roll out throughout the year. Some of these features include a feature that will let the assistant read out entire news articles on your Android phone, a new sticky note feature for Google Assistant displays, scheduled actions, improved new smart home device integrations and setup, and improving transparency around your privacy with the Google Assistant. You'll be able to ask the Google Assistant what it does with your voice recordings, how to delete your voice recordings, and more. To see the full CES announcement, check out Google's blog post in our video description below. Now we'll have much more on these features as they roll out throughout the year. So make sure you're subscribed to our channel and hit that bell icon so you never miss out on another one of our Google Assistant feature update videos. Well, that's it for our February update. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure you hit that thumbs up button below. For six months later, I'm Josh Tedder. Thanks for watching.